Hey guys, um, today I want to talk to you guys about why I'm here at this bar. And you can see here I've got my setup here with everything. I've got the arm set up for holding the camera. And you can see where I've got the light and you can see that it's a very bright bulb when compared to the other lights. Okay, why do I sit at this specific table? Okay, it's because of down here, these steps. Okay, if you've ever sat at a regular restaurant with a table, and the booth you gotta like get down to go into the booth and that's very uncomfortable whereas here i step up and i literally slide myself into the booth which is very comfortable which makes getting in and out of the booth extremely comfortable uh i've joked with miss stipley numerous times that if she wants me to stop coming here she has to recreate this corner of the bar in our house so <laughs> so just to give you a, a preliminary reasoning is why I work at this specific booth at the bar now I want to talk to you about the light okay when I started coming in here to the bar that was a 30 watt bulb and it wasn't very comfortable to, to uh, work at because it was just dark and so what I did was I went to Walmart one day before I came in here, bought a 30-watt bulb, and put it in. And at the end of the day, I would take it out and put the old 30-watt bulb in. And then, you know how, I mean, I, you, I'd be in here, I'd be talking to people, I'd be, okay, it's time to head home. I forgot to take the bulb out. And came back in, looked up, oh, gosh, I'd forgotten to take the bulb out, but Okay, nobody seems to mind, so I just kept leaving, loved leaving it in there. And then finally, the one manager, he was like, he was like, Vaughn, you gotta get your ticket bulb with you. So I took the bulb out, and he's like, you gotta put the other one in. And I go, and I go, where'd you put it? He was like, what? And I was like, it was in this drawer. Where'd you put it? And at the service station. And he was like, uh, uh, uh. so I just come in. There was no bulb. I put my bulb in take my bulb out when I leave. One, one day I came in and here they had put a floodlight bulb in the fixture. And that floodlight bulb has been in there ever since. It's like, you want to talk about displaying your dominance somewhere, this is a perfect example of displaying your dominance that everyone knows that this is my booth. Uh, Normally, nobody sits at this, sits along the wall here, uh, even at night. Um, but when they do, they would not sit at this booth. Uh, no, let's put it this way. Regulars would know not to sit at this booth. Uh, sometimes you'd have people who weren't regulars. They'd come in, and I'd either set up at a different booth, or I'd just sit at the bar. And as soon as they walk away, I would then uh, walk over and start working. So... Uh, just, you know, displaying your dominance. So, and another thing also is the reason why, like, people ask, like, why do you work at a dive bar? Um, okay, and this goes into what happened with Ed Piscor. Okay. Um, I was in a toxic relationship. We broke up. And I had to get my own place. Uh, start from scratch. Well, the problem was I was surrounded by all my stuff because I was, had, but I felt... I felt like a failure in from the relationship, and I couldn't handle and deal with living by myself. And I'd come in here to the bar. I, I'd come in this bar a few times, and the one evening I came in on Sunday evening, uh, or I'm sorry, Saturday evening, and it was late, and I just came in for a drink, and I and I asked the bartender Danny, I go, "Are you going to be?" watching the soccer game tomorrow morning. And he's like, yeah, I'll be watching the game. And I go, do you mind if I bring my artwork with me and I, and I, and I draw while I'm watching the game? He goes, I don't give a fuck what you do. And he used those exact words. <laughs> and he said it with a smile. So I came in here with my art, with my drawing board, this, this drawing board right here, um, an inkwell, and then I had a little tin. A little tin that I had that I, that I kept a couple pencils and a nib 
and I sat at the bar at the end and sat there for like two hours. Game was over and I sat there for a little bit and then I left. And then the next Sunday, did it again, stayed a little bit longer, a little bit longer until I was spending almost the entire day here until like five o'clock. And then the sports season was, football season was starting. And I was like, well, I know they're going to say something to me if I continue to sit here during the football season because I knew this place would get much busier. I'm like, if I start sitting at this booth over here, I'll be like displaying my dominance and lay claim to it. That way I shouldn't have a problem uh, working during the football season. And sure enough, I didn't have any problems. Um, if it was busy and all the other booths were taken, a lot of times a regular would walk up and they'd be like, hey, can I sit with you? And I was like, sure. And they would sit at the other side of the booth and they would just sit there and watch the game. And we would talk a little bit, but not a whole lot. Okay. And from that is like, that's how I became a regular here. Okay. And remember, the reason why I started coming here and I became a regular was because of depression and feeling alone. And with what happened with Ed, and what, first of all, I, I don't want. We, I, I said my piece really last night with, or with uh, if you want to get the other side, like my feelings on Ed and whatnot, uh, I was, I was, I, I, expl I explained it more clearly to Vanessa, so I don't really want to rehash it, okay? Um, but this is where, okay, artists are finicky, okay? We don't think like most people. We don't express ourselves the way most people do and but and that makes it hard okay that generally makes it hard for artists to interact with people and I can and so like the whole thing with like where artists are solitary individuals and hermits it's one of those like I do understand that but Ed is a perfect example of the the negative results of it and with social media, people taking social media so seriously because they are hermits and they don't want to talk to people, it's one of those deals where it's like, no, you got to leave your house. Okay, if, if you're hungry, go out and get something to eat. Don't do DoorDash and have them deliver it, okay? You're going to be a much healthier individual going out and talking to people in the real world, okay? Um, this is where I come to. I, I talk to people. Um, this is where I came up with the, uh, with, with the understanding of I am not an artist. I am a tradesman who makes a living doing art, okay? Because um, everybody thinks, oh, you're an artist, or more importantly, they insult you and they go, oh, you're an artiste. It's like, no, I'm a tradesman. I am a tradesman. I am exchanged. I am, I am creating an image to be sold, which means I'm taking part in commerce. Artists, in my opinion, are not doing that. They're like, I'm expressing my feelings, and this is my motivation, and this is my uh, outcry against the inhumanity of the U.S. government to people. Shut the fuck up. Okay? I'm sorry. You have to stop living in these bubbles. Okay? What happened to Ed was horrible. And I hope that from his death, okay, social media sites will start to be held accountable for the actions taken. Because, I mean, as it was revealed with Elon Musk, when he bought Twitter, it's one of those where it's like, well, no, you don't understand. I have Twitter. I have access to everything you are saying on my site. Because it's not a pub. It's because I it is my, I have a board of directors, but it's still, it's my property. So for me, it comes down to, it's like, I mean, I hope, is it, I hope that, we don't have any more ads. I don't like the fact that we have people who are so living in a bubble that they think the real world 
matter or the, or the, or the internet world matters. And like I said, it, this is the reason why I leave my house. It's the reason why I may not be the best artist. I may not be the most skilled and fastest, but I still, I leave the house. I interact with people. I mean, you take a look at Easter Sunday. Okay, if you all, if you, if you go back and watch last Easter Sunday, okay, you'll hear somebody was talking in the bar and they sounded like they wanted to rip somebody's head off and shit down their neck, shit down their neck. But the thing was, as soon as that bit video was over, I walked right by him to go to the bathroom and he was just having a normal conversation. You know, I think he was talking about politics. So yeah, that would get his blood boiling. But somebody said to him something. Anyway, and his response was, yep. It was very loud. And so he goes, like, he went, and I'm like, oh, that's his natural tone of voice. Okay? Um, we live in a world that if he were to, like, just, I'm placing my order, and I want uh, Red Lobster, I want the shrimp basket. Okay? We have individuals that are so soft and so sensitive, they're going to run to their manager and go, he verbally attacked me. No, he didn't verbally attack you. That is his, the natural tone of his voice. Get over it. So when you get these people who are being internet bullies, okay? I mean, that's the reason why I said like, last night in Danger Vanessa, okay? I work out of Johnny Joe's in Mechanicsburg. If you have a problem with me, don't beat me. Don't attack me on the internet. Come in here. Let's have a talk, okay? Because at the end of the day, Okay, what Eric at the end of the bar says to me, okay, is going to be more impactful, more meaningful, and even if he's a critical and he's saying negative things about me, okay, that's going to have more of an impact on me because he's in front of me and he's talking about this. And he's not like, oh, Vaughn, you're a horrible person and you can't drop a shit and da 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 No. Okay, and that's the reason why. I like, so, if you know someone who is so closed off that they don't understand how the real world acts, how the real world works, and how real people talk to each other, just remind them when because they're getting all bent out of shape because of something somebody said on the internet. It's one of those where it's like, dude, it's the internet. Have you ever physically seen this person? And, and have you ever physically talked to this person? No, but w w what they said to me on the internet was so bad. And everyone else, I'm like, and who are these people? Well, they're, they're, they're this person and this person. And where do they live? I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know where they live. And who the fuck cares? I don't fucking care. Okay? Okay? Again, okay? If Dallas was a, star, a Dallas was bartender today, if Dallas were to, like, yell at me and tell me to shut the fuck up because I'm being too loud and I'm being boisterous. Oh, sorry, Dallas. I, I'm sorry. I, di I didn't mean to. Uh, sorry, Eric. So sorry. Sorry, uh, Mar uh, Marty. Sorry, guys. I didn't, I'm sorry about that, guys. Why? Because they're, in, they're right here. I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm doing is directly affecting them. Okay? So... And like, and again, okay. If you ha if you know someone that they're that they're going through what could possibly be a form of depression, reach out to them, talk to them, even if just sending them a just send them a text message, okay, saying hey, how are you doing today, okay. Keep and if, if they give you if they blow you off with a I'm fine, okay, at least respond to them again, okay. If it's someone that you don't talk to on a regular basis, but they, but you see, but you know them through Facebook or Twitter, okay. It's one of those where it's like you almost want to like check each morning, make sure that they sent a tweet or they posted something on Facebook. They're like, okay, I let me I know that they're still alive. I know that they're. I know that they're okay, okay. But if there's someone who habitually like posts memes on Facebook and then all of a sudden. They go a day or two without posting memes. Then, yeah, you want to start like, okay, why isn't this person sending me uh, uh, memes about 
why cops are the greatest people in the world. Um, why are they stopped sending uh, uh, memes about it's summertime and my titties are sweaty? Okay. You expect that from someone. When they stop doing that, that then reach out to them and hopefully you get to them before it's too late. That's the reason why sometimes I'll spend time and I'll just, even though I don't necessarily agree with the meme, I'll, I'll click that I like the meme. That way that person knows that, hey, I saw it. I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is my way of just checking in with you. Okay? And if they start, if they start to say stuff online that makes you question, reach out to them right away right, also. I, I mean, I, I, and again, it's because, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad and scary how some people take the internet world way too seriously. Um, would I get along with Danger Vanessa if I knew her in real life? Okay, maybe not. But now that I've, now that I've interacted with her through social media, same as Jason Bascom, Okay, it's one of those where it's like, if I had the opportunity to go hang out with him or her, I would. Okay, but someone who is being belligerent to me and being negative, it's one of those where it's like, um, I'm, I'll be not, I, the nicest thing is not to say anything at all. Okay, uh, you've heard me how like there are certain uh, writers or artists who, uh, they take the internet stuff way too seriously and they attack people online and they make these grandiose bullshit statements. And it's one of those where it's like, okay, um, well, uh, if I see you at a show and if you're going to sign my book that you wrote, uh, okay, I'm just not, I'm just not really going to interact with you, but I like the story and I want you to sign it. So guys, I don't really have any much. I really don't know what to say more about it. I mean, other than I hope you guys understand why I work at this bar and why I take what happened to Ed so seriously, and hope that people will uh, will start taking action and looking after individuals that <clears throat> that need to be looked after and looked after in a good way. And it's like I said, I mean, it's like. He shouldn't have had to die. I, 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 and I, I hope that from this, eventually, uh, the, the lawmakers and government and the businesses, these internet businesses or it's social media businesses, uh, will start holding themselves responsible for their actions. So, okay. It's so like I said, I mean, I was... I started coming to this bar not to get drunk, not to piss my life away, but just not to be alone. And from that, uh, I, I don't know if I'd call it a circle of friends, but I have the people that I see in here and will exchange pleasantries. Um, there's one gentleman in here. Uh, he comes in here on a regular basis and like, Usually, I would say once every two months, uh, one of us will make a remark to the other person about something like, like a superhero movie or a TV show or a book or a movie. And next thing you know, uh, him and I are going to be sitting side by side and just going down the rabbit hole and just talking about everything and anything uh, pop culture related, movies. And, and he doesn't follow a lot of this internet bullshit stuff that I do. Um, he's just a regular person. So when Zilzer was like, I got, I've, I've, I've got more important things to worry about than this, that, and the other thing. Um, but we'll just sit and we'll talk. And it's just nice. And, and it, that doesn't mean that every single time that we see each other, we're going to talk. It just... Every like I said, every like month and a half, two months, uh, one of us will say some of the other person, and we'll go down that rabbit hole, and we'll enjoy it so much. We'll enjoy talking so much, and I know there's been times where he's had tough times in his life, and just having just sitting next to me and talking about this stuff with 
that he can, that we normally would not be able to talk to other people about, but me and him, but I do like this stuff, like superhero stuff and comic books and the comic book movies. And like I said, he can't talk about that stuff to other people, but it gives us both a chance to geek out about stuff and just enjoy each other's company, sitting there bullshitting, and it just leave the house. Fine. If you know someone who's like all they do is DoorDash and they won't leave their house and they have it, get them out of the fucking house. Okay? It's getting, it's, we got summertime coming. Weather's going to be beautiful. Get them out of the house. Someone's like, no, look, don't do DoorDash. Stop doing DoorDash for a cup of coffee at your local convenience store. Go to your local convenience store and buy that cup of coffee. Say hi to that person who's behind the counter. Okay? Don't use a self-checkout. Okay? Don't door dash a bag of chips. Go to go to your local grocery store and buy a bag of chips. Say hi to the teenager behind no you know what I'm saying. Say hi to the person who's checking you out. Or you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So okay, before I head out, um I'm putting in the link uh, Jason Bascom's latest book. It's probably going to be closing soon. Um, he put a lot of work into it. Uh, he called, refers to himself as the blind artist because he does have severe visual impediment. Uh, I talked to him and he said like the first thing he does when he wakes up and when he leaves the house is he like sl he like pats one pocket to make sure he's got his phone, the other pocket he's got to make sure he's got his keys. And then he checks to make sure he's got his glasses. Because he can't see for shit without his glasses. Um, so, and, but I mean, he put a lot of work into it. And I'll be honest with you guys. Normally, when I would, I would see a book like that, or on a shelf, I wouldn't get it. But having watched him put so much work into it, and seeing how he goes about his style for drawing and creating um, it made me one. It made me like, wow, I, I, I kind of, that is that style isn't my cup of tea, but I like how he's doing that. I want to support him. Okay, so and remember, he'll probably have stuff available, uh, like I will, at uh, Shay's art auction uh, next month in May. So, yeah, I think Crimson Jack's coming along pretty good. Um, I'm definitely going to pull more. I I got to pull all the black in on this side. And once I have the black in on this side, it'll help me determine how much I need to pull these blacks around so he's bleeding out of the blackness. Uh, like I said uh, in yesterday's video, that doing that where you, where someone's where a face is like coming out of the blackness and you just you see some of the features, that's not an easy thing to do. So that's the reason why you take a look here. How like I have detail around here, more light, but here I got a lot of dark. I'm probably going to go in. I think what I'll probably end up doing is I'll put darks, or not like a, not like this type of of, of a dot, ser dot series, but maybe like this or this around his eye, which will make him more menacing, more haunted. And what I'll do is I'll put I'll increase these blacks around or on his eyebrows. So and then of course I'll put a little bit here. So, guys. You all have a great day. Um, remember about Jason Bascom's book. I'll have it pinned in the in the uh, in the description. Uh, I'll remember also Andy Smith is going to be releasing uh, Corridor at the Reckoning soon. Uh, Broken Three is live. Check that out. You won't be Kenneth Roquefort has beautiful, awesome artwork. And uh, Graham Nolan and Aaron Lepresti have their campaigns. So. I'll make sure I have all of their campaigns listed in the description. Um, you guys all, please, have a great day. Remember, yes, life, and, and you, when you have that person in your life where it seems like they're going downhill, remind them, life is always going to be stressful. Life is stressful for you. Life is stressful for me. Life is stressful for them. Sometimes you can't get over it. Sometimes you can't fight it. You have to accept that they're stressed, but you just take it all one dot at a time.